Okay. I'm doing this with two computers today. One very, very old one. One new one. And I'm doing it. Sorry, I got an ish. I'm doing it this way because I've had to redo the last four Star Treks four times. Four times. And I... I'm very, very upset and agitated, and I've talked to Hewlett Packard. So if something goes wrong here, everybody blame Hewlett Packard because I spent three days with them on the telephone, and they cannot help me. My computer says there is nothing wrong. So when you watch the other videos and the audio goes blah, 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 it may even be blah, 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 blah right now. I don't know it until I play it back. So, um... It is what it is. I'm only me. I don't have the technology or the equipment or the money or anything else to um, invest. So th this, I read books. This is the D. Louise book series. Uh, welcome. Please hit the like and subscribe. I'd appreciate it. I'm doing the best I can. I'm Christina K-R-I-S-T-I-N-A and K-R-I-S-T-I-N-A over there too. Sorry. I'm trying to figure out what to, how to do these two cameras. Um, one is really old. One is new. I need you to work. I need you to work too because you're my backup. Um, so we'll see what happens. We are doing uh, J.R. Ward's Black Egg of Brotherhood. We are doing James Patterson's Alex Cross series. We are doing C.S. Harris' St. Cyr series. And we are doing If Thens. Please check my If Thens on Fridays. The last couple have been jibber-jabby, but the beginnings of them have been good. So please check them out. Let them run. Do mute. And just let the whole video play out. Use closed caption. Please. I need I need the views. I need the likes and subscribes. So we are on season disc. Season 6. Disc 1. Of Star Trek Next Generation. Uh, we did Times Arrow. A couple of times. Because the, the audio went on that. Realm of Fear. Uh, Man of the People. And today we are doing Relics, episode 230. And there have been audio problems on all of these. I give up. I've, I've done these a few times now. Um, it, it, I'm just going to have to live with it. I don't know what else to do. So um, if we get into it, <clears throat> this is Relics. I wish that I could uh, let the video run and talk as it runs, but we all know there's those copyright issues out there. So we'll see what we can do here. Um, <clears throat> we uh, Let's see if I can get to it. You're going to have to be patient with me with two videos trying to do this. Thank you. For those of you who don't know, the old computer is held together by a binder clip, and the binder clip just came off, so, uh, all right, so, let's get to our, uh, thing, uh, they're all at the science station, and Data says, Captain, I've identified the signal, it is from the USS Gentleman, a Federation transport ship Reported missing in this sector 75 years ago. Riker, Code 1, Alpha 0, ship in distress. Picard, take us out of warp. Ensign, all stop. Aye, sir. Picard says, report. Warp says, we've entered a massive gravitational field, Captain. Let's see if I can get a good visual. There, we have entered a massive gravitational field, Captain Worf says. There are no stars or other stellar bodies listed on our navigational charts, Data says. However, sensors indicate the presence of an extremely strong gravitational source in the vicinity. Picard says, can you isolate the source of the gravitational field? Just a second, let me see if I can do this. Who's... Okay, so they pull up a gray planet. A gray planet. 
Um, uh, can you localize the source of the great gravitational field? They show the great planet. Sensors, I'm having difficulty can't scanning the object. It appears to be approximately 200 million kilometers in distance. Riker says that's nearly as large as the Earth's orbit around the sun. Why can't, why didn't we check this until before now? Data says the object's enormous mass is causing a great deal of gravimetric interference. That might have prevented our sensors from detecting it before we dropped out of warp. Mr. Data, could this be a Dyson fear? The object does not fit the general, the object does fit the general parameters of the Dyson theory. Data says, Dyson theory? Fear, Riker says? It's a very old theory, number one. I'm not surprised that you haven't heard of it. In the 20th century, a physicist called Freeman Dyson postulated the theory that an enormous hollow sphere could be constructed around a star. This would have the advantage of harnessing all the radiant energy of that star. A population living on the interior surface would have virtually inexhaustible sources of power. Um, are you saying you think there are people living in there? Data says, possibly a great number of people, Commander. The interior surface area of a field this size is the equivalent of more than 250 million Class M planets. Sir, I have located the distress signal. It is coming from a point in the northern hemisphere. Oops. Okay, Worf says, I have located the distress signal. It is coming from a point in the northern hemisphere. Ensign Rager, put us in synchronous orbit above that position. Aye, sir. I have located the distress signal is coming from, oh, if it's right. I have located the gentle lean, sir. It's impacted on the surface of the sphere. Magnify. Data says there are no life signs. However, there are several small power emanations and life support is still functioning on minimal levels. Riker says, Riker to engineering. Geordi, join us in transport room through. Mr. Worf. And they all head to the Jolene. This is the image they show. So they beam down to the Jolene. Um, life support is barely operating. Riker says, see if you can increase the oxygen level. Worf says, aye, sir. Geordi says, commander, the transporter is still online. It's being fed power from the auxiliary systems. Riker says the dematerialization subroutine has been disabled. That's not all, Geordi says. The phasers and inducers are connected to the emitter array. The override is completely gone, and the pattern buffer has been locked into a continuous diagnostic cycle. This doesn't make any sense, Riker says. Locking the unit into a diagnostic mode just sends the matter array through a pattern buffer. Why would anybody want to? Geordi says there's a pattern in the buffer still. Riker says, it's completely intact. That's less than a 003 signal degradation. How is that possible? I don't know. I've never seen a transporter jury rigged like this. Could someone survive in a transporter buffer for 75 years? I know the way to find out. Look who is in the, in the transporter. Well, is that a familiar face or what? Uh, thank you, lad. We've got to get Franklin out of there. Someone else's pattern is still in the buffer? I, lad, Franklin. We went in together. Something's wrong. One of the inducers has failed. Boost the gain on the matter stream. Come on, Franklin. I know you're in there. It's no use. His pattern's degraded 53%. He's gone. Riker says, I'm sorry. So am I. He was a good lad. Riker says, 
I'm Commander William Riker, Starship Enterprise. Lieutenant Commander Jordy LaForge. Scott says the Enterprise? I should have known. I bet Jim Kirk himself hauled the old girl out of mothballs to come looking for me. Captain Montgomery Scott, tell me how long have I been missing? Well, sir... I restored life support. The oxygen levels will return normally. Captain Scott, Lieutenant Worf. Let's see if I can do this. And, uh, Scotty seems a little surprised to see a Klingon. Uh, uh Lieutenant, yes. Captain, perhaps there are a few things we should talk about, Riker says. So then they beam aboard the Enterprise. We should get you to sickbay. Dr. Crusher will want to. Scott says, you've changed the resonator array. Jordy, I think our guest is going to have a lot of engineering questions. Jordy says, not to worry, Commander. I'll take care of him, sir. Um, what have you done with the duotronic enhancers? Jordy says, those were replaced with isolinear chips about 40 years ago. It's more efficient now. That's an ESP power tap. Ah, says Scott. So you were saying earlier that you were on your way to the Norpin colony when you had a warp engine failure? That's right. We had an overload in one of the plasma transfer conduits. The captain brought us out of warp and we hit some gravimetric interference. And then there it was, as big as life. Is that conduit interface? Yeah, it is. You were saying it's big as life. You mean the Dyson Fear? Aye, actual Dyson Fear. Can you imagine the engineering skills needed to design such a structure? Yeah, it's pretty amazing. So what happened when you first approached it? Well, we began a standard survey of the surface, and we were just completing the initial orbital scan when our aft power coil suddenly exploded. Uh, the ship got caught in the sphere gravity well, and we went down. Franklin and I were the only ones to survive the crash. Jordy says, can I ask you a question? What in the world made you think of the transporter pattern buffer to survive? Well, we didn't have enough supplies to wait for rescue, so we had to think of something. Yeah, but locking into a diagnostic cycle so that the pattern wouldn't degrade, and then cross-connecting at phase inducers to provide a regenerative power source. That's absolutely brilliant. I think it was only 50% brilliant. Franklin deserved better. I think you're going to enjoy the 21st century, Mr. Scott. We've made some pretty incredible advances these last 80 years. From what I've seen, you've got a fine ship, Mr. LaForge. A real beauty here. I have to admit being overwhelmed. Jordy says, wait till you see the hollow deck." <clears throat> so then they have him in sick bay. You have a hairline fracture of the humerus. It will ache for a few days, but it should be fine. Thank you. Well, I'll say this about your enterprise. The doctors are a fair sight prettier. I'm John Luke Picard. Welcome aboard the Enterprise, Captain Scott. Thank you, sir, and call me Scotty. How are you feeling? I don't know. How am I feeling? Crusher says, other than a couple of bumps and bruises, I say you feel fine for a man of 147 years. I don't feel over a day over 120, he says. I must say, I was a little surprised when Commander Riker told me that you were aboard the Gentleman. Our records didn't show you listed as a member of the crew. Well, I was never actually a member of the crew. I was just a passenger. I was heading for Norpin 5 to settle down and enjoy my retirement. Well, I would very much enjoy the opportunity to hear you talk about your career. I'm sure you would have some fascinating insights into the events of your time. I'd be happy to, Sc Scotty says. Well, I look forward to it. Excuse me, Commander. We need to begin full spectrographics analysis of the Dyson Sphere. I'll get right on it, Jordy says. Once again, welcome aboard, Captain. Thank you, sir, and call me Scotty. How are you feeling? I don't know. How am I feeling? Um, other than a couple of bumps and bruises, I'd say you feel fine for a man of 147 years. I don't feel a day over 120. I must say, I was a little surprised when Commander Riker told me that you were aboard the Jolene. Our records didn't show you listed as a member. 
I was never actually a member of the crew. I was just a passenger. I was heading for North Pin 5 to settle down and enjoy my retirement. Well, I see. I would very much enjoy to hear you talk about your career. I'm sure you would have some fascinating insights into the event of your time. I'd be happy to. Good. Well, I look forward to it. Excuse me, Commander. We need to begin a full spectral analysis of the Dyson Fear. I'll get right on it, Jordy says. Good. Once again, welcome aboard, Captain. Sir, I need to get down to engineering and begin the analysis. Engineering? I thought you'd never ask. C Crusher says, Captain, the first thing you need to do is get some rest. Now, this has been a shock to your system, and I want you not to push yourself. We're pretty busy, busy down there anyway, Captain Scott. I promise I'll be happy to give you a tour just as soon as the doctor says it's okay. Crusher says, I'll have someone show you to your quarters. And Scotty's kind of disappointed. Tell me, does that remind you of a Borg cube somehow? It just looks like a Borg cube to me. So the guy is showing uh, Scotty around the room. Um, This is the replicator and your computer terminal. Good log, man. Where have you put me? These are the standard guest quarters, sir. I can try and find you something bigger if you want. Bigger? In my day, even an Admiral wouldn't have had such quarters on a starship. You know, I remember a time we had to transport the Dolan of Ellis. You never heard anyone whine and complain so much about quarters as she did. Kane says, the holodecks, 10 forward, and the gymnasium are all on your disposal. Our computer can tell you how to find them until we issue a comm badge. You'll use one of these panels if you need anything. You know... These quarters remind me of a hotel room or the on the Argalis. Now, there's a plan and everything a man wants right at his fingertips. Of course, on the first visit, I got into a wee bit of trouble. Excuse me, Sir Kane says. I have to get back to duty. Ah, well, Scotty says. Thank you. Poor Scotty. I feel so bad for him. Okay, so then Jordy is in engineering. I want you to shut down the warp engines and recalibrate the aft centers while I work on the lateral A. Okay, and then she 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 leaves. And then you hear somebody say, can I help you, sir? Um, oh, I don't think so, Lassie, but I'll let you know if you can. Sir, this is a restricted area, authorized personnel only. And here comes Scotty. Well, we're in engineering. Call me Scotty. J Scotty, this really isn't a good time for a tour. We're running a Phase 7 survey of Dyson 7. I'm not here for a tour, laddie. I'm here to help. That's very kind, but I'm sure we can handle it. Scott says, I was a Starfleet engineer for 52 years, Mr. LaForge. I think I'm still useful. You're right. We'll be grateful for any help you can give us. Let's get to work. Okay, back on the bridge. Sensor readings indicate the presence of a G-type star at the center of the fear. There also appears to be a Class M atmosphere clinging to the interior surface. Picard says, is there any indication the sphere is inhabited? Not yet, sir, Data says. Our preliminary data suggests it is still capable of supporting life. We have been unable to find definite signs of current habitation. Ms. Picard says, Mr. Data, send out a series of Class 4 probes to survey the far side of the fear. Perhaps we'll have more luck with them. Aye, sir, says Data. Then we're back in engineering again. Adjust the frequency stabilization on the main deflector dish. It's out of sync with the aft sensors. Scotty says, Laddie, you need to phase lock the warp fields with 3% or they'll become unstable. What? Look here. The warp field is... And the computer rejects his command. Hold on a second. We use a multi-phase auto-containment field now. It's meant to operate above 3%. Ah, oh, well, that would make the difference. But um, another person comes in and says, We can restart the engine in 10 minutes, Commander. Thank you, Lieutenant. I remember a time when the old Enterprise was spiraling toward PS2000. Thank you, Jordy says. The captain wanted to try a cold start of the warp engine, Scotty said. I told them without a proper phase lock, it would take at least 30 minutes. You cannot change the laws of physics, I told him. But he wouldn't believe me, so I had to come up with a new engine startup routine. Do you know your dilithium crystals are going to fracture? 
Jordy says, we recomposite the crystals while they're still inside the articulation frame. Look, Mr. Scott, I'd love to explain everything to you, but the captain wants the spectroanalysis done by 1,300 hours. Do you mind a little advice? Starfleet captains are like children. They want everything right now, and they want it their way. But the secret is to give them only what they need, not what they want. Yeah, well, I told Captain I'd have this analyst done in an hour. How long will it really take? An hour, Jordy says. You didn't tell him how long it would really take, did you? Of course I did. Oh, laddie, you've got a lot to learn if you want people to think of you as a miracle worker. Now listen. Jody says, Captain Scott, I've tried to be patient, I've tried to be polite, but I've got a job to do here. And quite frankly, you're in my way. I was driving starships while your great-grandfather was still in diapers. I think you'd be grateful for some help. I'll leave you to your work, Mr. LaForge. I feel bad for Scotty. So Scotty goes to 10 forward to order a scotch neat. And he gives him the drink. And Scotty asks, what is this? Didn't you order a scotch? Laddie, I was drinking scotch a hundred years before you were born. And I can tell you whatever this is, it's not scotch. Just a second. Uh. So Data comes over. Um... I believe I may be of assistance. Captain Scott is unaware of the existence of Synthahal. Synthahal? Um, yes, sir. It's an alcoholic substitute now being served aboard starships. It simulates the appearance, taste, and smell of alcohol, but the intoxicating effects can be easily dismissed. You're not quite human, are you? No, sir. I'm an android, Lieutenant da Commander Data. Synthetic Scotch, Synthetic Commanders. Data, I believe Guinan has a so limited supply of non-synthetic products. Perhaps one of them might be to your liking. Data goes behind the bar and comes out with a bottle. So Data gives him this green stuff. Um, and he, he takes the bottle and goes to the holodeck. He tells the computer... Um, the android at the bar said you could show me my old chip. Let me see it. Insufficient data. Please specify parameters. The Enterprise. Show me the bridge of the Enterprise, you chattering piece of... There have been five Federation starships with that name. Please specify registry number. NCC1701. No bloody A, B, C, or D. Program complete. Enter when ready. Now, isn't that a blast from the past? See this. His Enterprise. The original Enterprise. And he has a drink, and he toasts to the crew. And... I think uh, everybody is deceased, even him now, including, well, except for Shatner. I think Shatner um, and one of the, uh, I, t t t t Tiki, Togi, forgive my pronunciation, I, Taki, I think he's still alive. I think everybody else is deceased. Um... So, then Picard comes in. Uh, I hope I'm not interrupting. I was just coming off duty, and I wanted to see how you were doing. Not at all, not at all. Have a drink with me, Captain. Thank you. I don't know exactly what it is, but I would be real careful. It's real. And Picard drinks it in one scope. It's Aldebarian whiskey. Who do you think gave it to Guinan? Ah, Constitution class. Ah, you familiar with them? There's one in the Federation Fleet Museum. But then, of course, this is your enterprise. Actually, I served on two. This was the first one. She was also the first ship I ever served as chief engineer. You know, I served aboard 11 ships, freight, freighters, cruisers, starships. But this is the only one I think of, the only one I miss. 
This first starship I ever served aboard as captain was called the Stargazer. I was overworked, underpowered vessel, always on my verge of flying apart at the seams. It's in every measurable sense my enterprise is far superior, but there are times when I would give almost anything to command the Stargazer again. Scott said, it's almost like the first time you fall in love. You don't ever love a woman quite like that again. Well, to the Enterprise and the Stargazer, old girlfriends will never meet again. What do you think of the Enterprise D? Uh, she's a beauty with a good crew. But when, but when I was here, I could tell you the speed that we were traveling by by the feel of the deck plates. But on your ship, I feel like I'm just in the way. 75 years is a long time. If you would care to study some technical schematics or... I'm not 18. I can't start out like a raw cadet. No, there comes a time when a man finds that he can't fall in love again. He knows that it's time to stop. I don't belong on your ship. I belong on this one. This one was my home. This is where I had purpose, but it's not real. It's just a computer-generated fantasy. And I'm just an old man who's trying to hide in it. Computer, shut this bloody thing off. It's time I acted my age. Aw, I feel bad for him. You know, I really need a side view. I hate when they do these back and forth views like that. I'd like a side view of both people talking. Um, so Picard calls Jordy into the uh, radio room and uh, please, Lord God, let this video still be working properly. Um, Mr. LaForge, I understand that before the Gentleman crashed, it had conducted an extensive survey of the Dyson Fair. Have we been able to access any of those records? We did try to download their memory core, but it was pretty heavily damaged in the crash. We actually haven't been able to get much out of it. Perhaps Captain Scott would be of use in accessing that material. It's possible. He does know those systems better than any of us. I'll have Lieutenant Bartell beam down with him. Mr. LaForge, I would like you to accompany Captain Scott. Me, sir? Yes. Look, this is not an order. It's a request, and it's one which you must feel perfectly free to decline. You see, one of the most important things in a person's life is to feel useful. Now, Mr. Scott is a Starfleet officer, and I would like him to feel useful again. Yes, we would all like to feel useful, and we would all like to feel needed. And we would all like our videos to work, too, and get seen by tons and tons and tons and tons of people. And we all know that's not going to happen. There are many channels out there that don't go nowhere. I've been going somewhere one little step at a time. <laughs> I'll go with him, sir, Jordy says. Thank you, Picard says. So then Data says, Commander, I believe I found something in the fear which could be a communication device. There's an antenna array approximately 400,000 kilometers south of our present position. It's emitting low-intensity subspace signals. Can you open a channel? No, sir. Not from our present orbit. The array is currently directed away from us. Ensign, prepare to put us in orbit above those coordinates. Captain Picard, to bridge, please. So Jordy is preparing to go down with Scotty. And he comes in a little wobbly. And Scotty's, uh, Jordy says, are you feeling all right? Scott says, never get drunk unless you're willing to pay for it the next day. I'll manage. And they beam down. Man, I'm telling you, that looks so much like a Borg cube, it's not funny. <clears throat> so they go over in front of the doors. Um, Data says, sensors indicate that the large circle is a portal or airlock, possibly leading to the interior of the sphere. This looks like the front door. Shall we ring the bell? Mr. Wolf, open a channel to that communications array. Aye, sir. And uh, the door opens. And the ship is shaking, and they go to Red Alert, and it's some kind of tractor beam has locked onto them. And Riker says, get us out of here, Helm. And uh, they lost their main power, and uh, you can see the tractor beam is pulling them in. 
We're being pulled inside, Worf says. Auxiliary power failing, Rager says. The renaissance frequency of the tractor beam is incompatible with our power systems. Warp and impulse engines re relays have been overloaded. I'm attempting to compensate. Uh, the tractor beam has released us, sir. Hold position here until we can get our bearings. Full sensor sweep, Mr. Data. Where are we? Approximately 90 million kilometers from the star's photosphere. I'm meaning a great deal of surface instability. It may be... Ah, shoot. I wanted to picture the thing... So, <clears throat> they get juggled around, and they try to get out, and um, the tractor beam starts pulling them in, and they go directly inside the thing. So, the Enterprise gets pulled into the star. The primary computer database should be online now. Give it a try, Scotty says. Okay, I've got three access lines to the central core. Jordy says. Bunch of old uses garbage, huh? I say it's old, Mr. LaForge. I can't handle the interface of your power converter. This equipment was designed for a different era. Now it's a piece of junk. I don't know. It seems like some of it's held together pretty well. Well, it's such a out of date. It's just obsolete. Well, you know that's interesting because I was just thinking a lot about the system that hasn't changed in the last 75 years. This transporter was basically the same one we use on the Enterprise. Some space radio and sensors still operate under the same basic principle. Impulse engines design hasn't changed much in the last 200 years. If it wasn't for all the structural damage, the ship might be still in service today. Maybe so, Scott says. But when they build ships like your Enterprise, who would want to pilot old buckets like this? I don't know if the ship was still operational. I bet you'd run circles about the Enterprise and pulse speeds. Just because it's old doesn't mean you throw it away. We used to have something called the dynamic mode converter. You wouldn't have something like that on your Enterprise, would you? I haven't seen anything like that in a long time, but I bet it might be able to come up with something similar. Look forward to Enterprise. Look forward to Enterprise. Come in, please. Interference? No, they're gone, Jordy says. We will enter the sun's photosphere in three minutes, Data says. Maneuvering thrusters? I've got 30% power, Riker says. It won't be enough to stop us. No, but it may be enough to turn us into orbit. Hold our distance from the photosphere. And it's important to thrust us full ahead. Stop with thrust us full back. Our flight path is changing. Right 10.7 degrees are insufficient to clear the photosphere. Uh, Lieutenant Boyntel will divert all power from auxiliary railway systems to the maneuvering thrusters. I sir. We're in orbit, Captain. Our altitude is 150,000 kilometers. <coughs> I'll see you about getting main power back online. Very well, Mr. Data. The card says, begin a scan of the interior surface. <laughs> For life forms. I want you to know who brought us in your NY. I, sir. I can't find them anywhere in orbit, Jordy says. They could have crashed into the field like the Jolene. No, we'd be picking up background radiation if they'd gone down. There's another possibility. They could have gone inside, Scotty says. Maybe. Whatever happened, we got to find them. Get those engines back online. We can track them with their impulse iron trail. Are you deaf? The main drive assembly shot. The inducers are melted and the power couplings are wrecked. We need a week just to get started. We don't have a week. So there's no sense in crying about it. Come on. We'll see what we can do with your power converter. Data says the sphere appears to be abandoned. Sensors show that the star is extremely unstable. It has experienced severe bursts of radiation and matter expulsion. Then that would explain why they abandoned it. But if there's no one living there, how will we brought inside? I believe we triggered a series of automatic piloting beams designed to guide ships into the sphere. Warf says, sir, sensors show a large magnetic disturbance on the star's surface. Data says it's a solar flare, Captain. Magnitude 12, Class B. Shields? Shields are up, but only at 23%. The 
star has entered a period of increased activity. Sensors indicate that the solar flares will continue to grow. In three hours, our shields will no longer be sufficient to protect us, data says. I hate when I can't see. I, I guess I'm trying to say that there's no power on the ship, but I hate that you can't see anything. Um, Scott says, shunt the deuterium from the main cyber pump to the auxiliary tank. Jordy says, the tank can't withstand that kind of pressure. Where did you get that idea? What do you mean, where did I get that idea? It's in the impulse engine specifications. Regulation 42 slash 15 pressure variance IRC's tank storage. Yeah. Forget it. I wrote it. A good engineer is always a wee bit conservative. At least on paper. Just bypass the secondary cutoff valve and boost the flow. It'll work. Okay. We've done our jobs properly. The engine should be coming back online now. Hey, you're right. The delivery tank is holding. Take the bridge, Commander. Oh, no, you're the senior officer here. I can be captain by rank, but I never wanted to be anything else but an engineer. All right, Jordy says. So then we're back on the Enterprise again. Uh, Shields still holding, sir, Wolf says, but they are down another 15%. Mr. Wolf, can we use the phases to open a hole in the fear? No, sir, the exterior shell is composed of carbon neutral. Our weapons would be ineffective. Mr. Data, we have to find some way out of here. Begin scanning for another patch of portal that might open. Data says the interior surface is over 10, 10 to 16 square kilometers. It would take seven hours to complete to scan the surface. I will endeavor to speed up the process, he says. Uh, <clears throat> so then they show Scotty and Jordy on the other ship. Just outside the door. The ion trail leads right to this point. It looks like some kind of doorway. I'll bet you two bottles of scotch are there inside the sphere and they went in, they went right through that hatch. No bet here. The question is how. Look at the momentum distribution on the ions. It would take an impulse engine of full reverse to pull out of a signature like that. So they didn't go in willingly. This looks like some kind of communications array. I. We found hundreds of them when we did our initial survey 75 years ago. Did you try hailing them? I. The standard procedure at the time. We did it right before we crashed. Hailing is the standard procedure anyway, too. Scotty, what if those are communication arrays? What if they're just access terminals which are triggered by subspace signals on certain frequencies? Frequencies like our standard ships hail. Exactly. The, the identifiers, when they saw the terminal, they probably did the same thing you did 75 years ago. Open the channel. Only this time they triggered something that activated a hatch and pulled the ship inside. Very nice piece of reasoning, laddie. Nice indeed. Yeah, well, we probably triggered the hatch ourselves. Only we get pulled in like they were. Maybe all we need to do is to get our foot in the door. We might not be pulled inside when the hatch opens. If we distance from the spear, say it has like eight kilometers, then when the hatch opens, we move it and use the jolly to jam the hatch opening, hoping, hoping that the Enterprise will escape. You can't be serious. That hatch is huge. It'll crush the ship like an egg. Jody, the shields will hold. Don't worry about that. I can get a few extra gigawatts out of these babies. Scotty, that's crazy. Jody, I spent my whole life trying to figure out, figure a crazy way out of doing things. I tell you, it's one engineer to another. I can do this. All right, let's do it. We're at 500,000 kilometers. Engines are ready. Okay, here we go. And they go and do their little thing that we're going to do. So they managed to get the doors open. Oh, I want to leave it at I hope this video is still working. Please let the sound still be working. Please say your present that the sound is still working. Please let the sound still be working. Please let this video be a success. Okay, so <clears throat> Jordy Wolf says this is an ordinary message of Command Bill Forge. So Forge your enterprise to you and go ahead. We read you. We're using the jolting to hold open the hatch you came through, but our shields aren't going to hold that much. Longer. I just did it and instead of course. Um, then we go back to the uh, Jolene. So, ah, uh, shoot. So they go, they're holding the door open. 
this is not working very well, is it? Oh, shoot, I screwed up. Um, so, uh, I missed a couple of sections here. The plasma cooler is gone, the engines are overheating. I've lost channel control. The forge enterprise captain, we're not going to be able to move the ship out of the way when you get here. Uh, for you're going to have to destroy it in order to escape. How much longer before we reach them? With an impulse engine at 60% power, it will take one minute 40 seconds. Bridge to transport will be prepared to be two from the Jolene as soon as we're in range. Scott says, We're coming up out, and I can't do anything. Um, and then we're back to the bridge again. So they show the picture of the ship and the thing again. But I hope this video is working. So then we're back with Worf. Photon torpedoes armed and ready, sir. Data we are within transporter range. Ready to transport with energize. Aye, right, sir. Fire. And they blow up the Jolene. Now, that wasn't so bad, was it? So then we'll be coming back. Uh, Captain's uh, overview. Start date 46125.3. Starfleet is dispatched to science vessels to study the Dyphon Sphere. We proceed to Starbase 55. So, Jordi and Scotty are talking in the hallway. So, this alien space baby, which was about the size of a four story building, really thought the Enterprise was this month. You're pulling my leg, old man's leg. No, really, it was sucking power directly from the ship's fusion reactors. So Dr. Brams and I charged the power frequency from 21 meters to 0 to 10 meters. You sour the milk, Scotty says. That's right. Enjoy these times, Jordy. Enjoy. You're the chief engineer of a starship, and it's the time of your life that never will come again. When it's gone, it's gone. And now, lad, I thought you were going to buy me a drink and tend forward. Actually, I had a better idea. So they take Scotty into the shuttle bay. You're giving me one of your shuttles? We'll call it an extended load. Since you lost your ship saving hours, it's only seen fair. She's not much to look at. Scott, laddie, every woman has her own charm. You just have to know where to look. She's a little sober, but she'll certainly get you to the Norpin colony if that's where you really want to go. The Norpin colony is for old men to retire. Maybe someday I'll end up there, but not yet. Well, bon voyage, Mr. Scott. Thank you, sir, for everything. Mr. Scott, goodbye. Bye-bye. Scotty, bye. Thank you. Uh, Crusher gives him a hug. Bye. Um, a good crew. Yeah, they are. A fine ship, a credit to your name. But I've always found that a good ship is only as good as the engineer who takes care of her. And from what I can see, the Enterprise is in good hands. You take care of yourself, Scott says I. And that ends... Relics. I hope this video worked. I hope the sound worked. I hope you stayed with me the whole time. We have finished disc one of season six. We did the times out one and two. We did realm of fear. We did man of the people. Today we did relics two thirty. Please let this video sound have worked. Um, and please hit the like and subscribe. Don't forget to check out If Then later this afternoon. I work really hard on those. And don't forget Flashback Mondays. And of course, we are reading James Patterson's Alex Carr series, J.R. Ward's Black Dagger Brotherhood, and C.S. Harris' Saints Series. So please check all of those out. Thank you. Have a good day.